Hello people and welcome back to yet another Conan Exiles video. Um, today, being as we haven't been raiding much, uh, we're going to be doing a little guide on the unnamed city. I'm getting a lot of questions about legendaries, I'm getting a lot of questions about um, where to find them, how difficult they are, how you do it solo. So I thought, screw it, I'll take you through uh, a quick little guide on what I know about the unnamed city. Where to find, what drops from what boss, how to kill the bosses on your own. Uh, when I say on your own, I don't mean on your own as in, you know, you're just doing it yourself. I mean like with a thrall, as in just you and a thrall. So, first things first, we're going to get into the loadout of the thrall. Personally. I know what wins against every single one of these bosses from experience. So what I use is a bandit leader with a sword of crom. Yeah, that's a nightmare if you haven't already got a sword of crom and a full set of silent legion. I grant you that reduces damage. Um, I think it's it's either twenty five percent or seventy five percent of incoming. Uh, bandit leader's got overpowered strength as well. The Sword of Crom's only use with 97 damage with a damage kit on it is uh, for a thrall. So the hardest hitting, most aggressive thrall that I know to is a bandit leader. And he can pretty much solo any boss in the unnamed city. So if you take him, once you've got one, you can find them in the in Sepamaru, the city of the relic hunters. I'll quickly show you there. There's about two spawns in Sepamaru down there. Um, you can go and throw one of those. It's quite simple to throw if you've got another thrall, if you're struggling Just give that other thrall a tier 3 Sumerian fighter or something that hits quite hard That's not a bandit leader um, Give it a steel truncheon, hold a shield up Have a truncheon yourself or a love tap or a predatory blade with a blunt uh, Fitting on it and only use the heavy attack because it does no damage the, the predatory blade does no damage at all with a heavy, but it does overpowered damage with a light. So you can use the light attack to separate um, NPCs that aggro, and then you can use the heavy attack with a blunted weapon fitting to create a stun block and get yourself a bandit leader just from getting the predatory blade. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the unnamed city, the things inside, the bosses inside, what they drop, and how to kill them. So I've marked everything up, um, I've marked all the bosses, each individual boss, so I'm going to leave this screen on for a couple of seconds, uh, hover over the icons to, so you know what I've called things, we've got um, the one-handed skeleton over here, we've got uh, a red dragon there, we've got a serpent man there, we have another red dragon there, we have a giant white or whatever you call it, I think it's white, right, something like that, if I'm pronouncing that wrong correct me, phonetically obviously. Uh, we've got a two-handed skeleton up on something there, uh, the giant snake, that just drops a skeleton key, um, and then we've got the albino back down there. So, we're going to start from a, the entrance closest to the Mitra area, so we're going to come in from this zone. So the first boss we're going to go and look at is the Serpent Man. So we're going to make our way down here to where he spawns and we're going to have a look at what the loot table is for the serpent man what it drops what the possibilities are how easy he is to down and put it this way i haven't actually got um a strength build on i've got my encumbrance build on because i know the bandit leader can pretty much you know one shot everything <laughs> um not like instantly kill but i mean he can take it on his own as long as he's got the aggro and you're doing a bit of damage you should be all right i'm just showing you without a strength build how easy it is to farm these. So, let's look for the serpent man, let's see if he's here. If he's not here, we'll move on to somebody else and wait for the respawn. There he is, right. So my icon is showing me just there, that somewhere there the serpent man will be. So there he is, that's the serpent man. Right, now this guy, he hits pretty hard. He's a three skull, he can cause bleed, he's got a nice lunge that, that triggers a bit of bleed as well. Um, he's roaring at me there, his aggro range is pretty big as well. So we're going to walk away a sec just so we can just so we can have a little chit chat about the serpent man. Alright, so from what I know from fighting him a few times, this guy 
can drop um, the predatory blade, it can drop the shank, which is legendary daggers for those of you that don't know, it can drop the helm of the brute which is a legendary armour piece and the gauntlets of the brute. It will always drop a fragment of power and it will always drop a legendary weapon repair kit. So. Without a strength build, I'm going to be using Whirlwind Blades. I know he can't be bled, I just really like the look of the bloody Whirlwind Blades. They look absolutely awesome. Legendary daggers, um, available from the, uh, the Library of Esoterics. Um, it's uh, where you're turning your fragments of power to get the other recipes, the secret recipes if you like. Where you get the kiln, you can get the Whirlwind Blades, and they are awesome. Most overpowered daggers in the game in my opinion. Going to be using the lifeblood spear just for regen in our health if uh, things get a bit tasty. Uh, we've got a bit of meat, we've got a bit of ambrosia. If push comes to shove, the gear we're using is flawless Aquilonian infantry. So we've got two bars on the heat resistance and we have an armor rating of 475. It's medium, so we can roll. If push comes to shove, we can also backdash. So just turn your character, backdash, turn your character, backdash. You can, you've always got control of the fight that way. So we're going to target this guy and we're going to see what he drops. I know I've only got an hour for this video. So we're going to hit him a few times. We're going to let Cromboy take the aggro. He's going to boot him in the face. All right. So you start. There you go. Right now. Let's watch his health. So I've hit him a couple of times and I'm not going to touch him again. I'm just going to put my lifeblood spear on, get my health regen back. Currently bleeding so it stops me healing. And another thing that will um, help this sort of loadout as well is if you bring yourself some arrows, some healing arrows. Um, you bring yourself a strength build so you can apply damage to it as well. I mean, I could go in for a couple of spikes in its spine. A couple of heavies. Um, and just mix it up like this. But just make sure that you sandwich on PvP. You sandwich the attacks. So, as long as you're going in front and you're behind, you won't actually land a hit on your throw. So there's always that to consider. If otherwise, you're going to end up bleeding your guy, and he's not going to last as long as he should. So at the minute, you can see the Silent Legion is doing its work. He's not taking any damage. He's sundering him. The guy's nearly dead. Um, just going to stand back a bit, let him finish him off. Right, so he's gone. Right, so now we can have a little look, and we get... What the hell? This is new. Glass flask? Glass... There's the guaranteed legendary weapon repair kit, and there's the guaranteed fragment of power. Right, so he didn't drop us a legendary that time, but the possibilities are the predatory blade and the shank for the legendaries from this guy. Right, so just bear that in mind. Sometimes it doesn't always drop, sometimes it does. The loot in this area is absolutely diabolical for drop rates, so just be warned. Sometimes you'll get something, sometimes you won't. But when it's that easy, who really cares? Right, so we're going to go and take on the one-handed skeleton next. And something to note before we get there is um, the one-handed skeleton, the two-handed skeleton, the skeleton with a hammer, and the giant rot or right or whatever you say, is um, they all share the same loot pool. It's a massive loot pool, but um, yeah, they all share the same one. So any of these can drop. Um, say for example the Sword of Crom. Any of them can drop the Sword of Crom, as far as I'm aware. That is what I've, you know, ascertained from the hours and hours and hours of killing these bloody things. So, all of them seem to share the same loot pool. Maybe it's because they're all technically armoured skeletons with just different weapons. I don't know. It might be the case, it may not. So, we're going to have a drink. We're going to have some food. There he is there, look. Um, we'll have a little fight with him. He's quite simple, actually. I mean, he's got a bit of a stun. But, yeah. I'll zoom in on the map there so you can see right around where he is. So he's just there. Um, there's the archives. There's the slave pits. He's literally somewhere in the middle. 
my cursor's a bit off, it should be there. But you get the idea. Alright, so we're going to go and smack him up as well. Um, ideally we want to take care of these little cronies first. Because there's nothing worse than getting spikes in the spine. Yeah, feel free from. There you go, that's the difference. Right, so you. Oh, he's going straight for the boss. Right, this guy's ours then, apparently. There we go. Oh, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Watch your back, dude. Right, so. Currently, we've just had some people turn up. I don't think they realise I'm doing a video. But Bandit Leader Boy's trying to take him out. He's chunking him pretty well on his own. We're just going to stand back. Let him do his work. But, currently, at this rate, with two people on him, you can see how quick it goes down. That's not purpose, that's the point. I haven't got a strength build, so these guys probably have got a strength build because they're farming. Unless that's a thrall. I don't know whether that's a... No, that's... Yeah, it is a thrall. It is a thrall. It's a named fighter. Right, so the thralls are doing their work. Me and the other guy over there are standing back, just doing our thing. Once this guy's dead, um, we're going to have a look at the loot, but we're not going to take it. So you feel free, my dude. You can take it. No worries. I just want to show what is in this guy. Right. So he's dead. So let's have a look at what he dropped. Right, so in there, again, no legendary weapon, just a fragment of power and a legendary weapon repair kit. That's my point. The one-handed skeleton and the two-handed skeleton and the... Um, Rort, the giant rort, and the, um, oh, what's it called? Giant rort, one-handed skeleton, two-handed skeleton. Oh, yeah, the two-handed skeleton with a hammer, right? Two-handed skeleton with a hammer. Right, if he's not taking it, I'm going to take it, because I'm just leaving that there. They all share the same loot pool. Now, let's get into the loot pool of these skeletons, shall we? So, currently... We know that there's a Night Stalker mask that can be acquired from them. The War Dancer chest piece. The Exquisite Silk shirt. Exquisite Silk leggings. A Scorpion helmet. A Scorpion harness. The Commander's helmet. The Commander's chest piece. The Legacy of the Nordheimers. I believe that is... Um, that's another uh, armour piece. Uh, War Mammoth boots. And then we get into the legendary weapons. It can drop the Maelstrom, the Siege Hammer, the Lying Bastard Sword, what everybody wants to know, the Sword of Crom, all the skeletons and the Rort. Sword of Crom. Easy. Corrupted Axe, the Festering One, the Drunkard's Blade, the right White Blade, Quake, and the Heated Augment. Right, so that's their loot pool. All four of them. So I can show you on the map currently where they all are just so you all know. So we got the one-handed skeleton just there, right where, that's the one we just killed. Then, we got the two-handed skeleton down there. So that's just, just in, inside there. He's pretty difficult and he's got a line of skeletons there, he's got a line of skeletons there, um, and then he's stood in the middle. So there's that one, and then over here, there's a two-handed skeleton holding a hammer. Now, this is the one that I wanna show you all because nobody seems to be able to find out where the damn thing is. And I must admit, it took me a, it took me a couple of minutes to figure it out, but it was, it's not as easy to see as uh, the rest of them, because it's, it's actually above, and you need to do some climbing to get to him. So we're gonna run over here, and if you look up there on that bridge, I believe he's up there. So yeah, you need to do a bit of climbing to get to this guy. And just be warned, he's got a hammer. So if he smacks you in the mouth and you go flying off, you're going to instantly die and everything you've looted is just going to go. <laughs> you're going to lose the lot. So, yeah, bear that in mind, people. So what I tend to do is I tend to run onto this little square platform up here. Hopefully that guy wasn't an archer. We're going to take all of our gear off so we're more than likely able to make the climb because we haven't got a grip build or anything like that. So then we're going to... Jump up there like that. Just going to hold forward. Because if we move left to right, we're going to use too much bloody stamina. And hopefully... Ooh, we can bend around a bit. There we go. Don't you drop me. 
this is really tetchy as well because some parts of the climb actually ping you off so just yeah block that shite see that's what you don't want to happen thankfully I've got the life blood spear so regen's okay um, usually it doesn't drop you there and you can stand on that little edge and then you can climb yourself up it's like sort of a respite but if you've got a grip build you're laughing if you haven't then let's get some triple heels on the go there we go don't need to wait for that crap all right let's get some water on the go cool ourselves down that's another thing to bear in mind as well people I didn't know this for a quite a long time but if you are extremely hot extremely cold um, you have oh my god this bloody climbing mechanic if you have extremely hot extremely cold or anything that takes health damage bleed or um, any sort of negative status effect noxious gas you cannot climb you will fall down weather effects as well you will just fall down there is no way to stop it um, you can't see what I mean this is why I needed to show you this because it drove me mad for a long time so we're gonna take that respite as well just to get ourselves a tiny little bit higher and then we're gonna climb up this part here and we're just gonna dodge to the slight right and hopefully if we come up this side, duck left, and then go right, we may end up being able to take that rest stop just here. So we'll duck left now, spin the character around, thank you, duck right, and then stand there. There we go. That's exactly what I wanted to do in the first place. What's the betting we end up with a damn sandstorm when we hit the top, considering I haven't got my sandstorm mask on me like a numped? Right, so we'll carry on up here, get ourselves up the never mind another thing you can do is look down when you climb when you get over an edge just look down apparently it pulls you up for some reason so again bear that in mind or just build yourself a grip build if you keep falling then at least you can grab can't you so we're at the top and there he is mr star metal two-handed so again just so you all know he's literally on the top of that little bridge there and that's the two-handed hammer skeleton we'll show you if he drops anything we may get lucky and get the sword of crumb just to prove a point but you never know right bandit leader do you care to intervene whoop no no yeah thank you dude right there we go Let's lock on, let's see uh, the damage he does to our bandit leader. Let's poke him in the air pass a bit. Keep that sandwich thing going so you avoid damaging your own thrall. The quicker you damage him, the quicker you deal damage both sides for between you and your um, thrall, the more bosses you can actually kill before you need to go back, regen your bandit leader, um, or just bring some healing arrows. That would be, yeah, that would be the most ideal thing to do. Bring some healing arrows. Right, so he's switched now, so we need to switch. So we'll go behind him again. Make sure we don't take a hammer to the spine. Or bleed the bandit leader, but thankfully that bleed missed. You notice I'm not stacking any bleed at all on my bandit leader due to this sandwich technique that I've figured out. So no matter what we do, the bandit leader will not take damage from us, from the whirlwind blade or otherwise. But you see how he flies when he connects that hit? If he does that final hammer blow, he can make the bandit leader fly upwards. If he catches you with that and you're on that edge just like that, you're going to go off and you're going to die. So maybe this is why nobody farms this guy. Right, he's down. He's down. What did we get? nothing again see what i mean the loot drops are terrible but we are getting guaranteed fragments of power and legendary weapon repair kits which are brilliant especially for repairing the final breath of the red mother which is a torch that lasts a week this is obtained by um a rare drop from the red dragon i believe uh, outside of sephimaru i don't know whether it can drop from the green one inside the unnamed city but but well, you never know. 
they may have changed the loop tools I'm not entirely sure right what we got left we've got the bat boss right so we've got bat boss we've got giant snake giant snake doesn't technically drop any weapons that's like a big boss um, same as the other two dragons they drop skeleton keys and the like so that's not it's not really something to farm if you want um, legendary drops uh, green dragon I'm not too sure and I think the green dragon drops skeleton keys we'll go kill it we'll, we'll find out in this video we'll go kill it but what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go over to the giant white right whatever actually the red dragons right behind us just there so yeah he, he will count as a three skull boss and I believe he has got a skeleton key box behind him that's one way to figure out what they drop usually um, if, if it's a farmed um, boss for legendary loot and the like um, it will have a skeleton key so you can just go and open the box behind them if not and it's an unnamed city boss which drops the legendary uh, chances of the predatory blade uh, the lifeblood spear the sword of Krom things like that, the, the, the things that people want um, then yeah that's usually not the way to go if you wanna if you want those don't go for the three skulls like these is he dead? yeah he's dead he's just been killed, right never mind then another thing to take note of as well we probably won't be able to see it currently because people are farming it but the, the chest for the dragon is usually about here it's currently been looted so there's that to consider as well um, but usually here I think it's literally right there if you're lucky there is a box and you get um, a fragment of power free for it so that's always good if you're trying to get like say the whirlwind blades or havoc and malice the um, the esoteric axes and the like. I mean, I think I've actually got the feats for those currently. Um, could probably show you real quick if I knew where that uh, skull thing was. The esoteric, there we go. Esoteric's library. Havoc and Malice, look there. That is another set of daggers, but it's dual wielding um, axes. You get that from handing in fragments of power. Same as the kiln. Uh, same as the venom infused daggers, venom infused pike, the sword, venom infused two handed sword uh, you get all of the um, taxidermies as well so you can you know put like dead creatures outside your base um, you can also get the yogite chosen mask it, all of these will take a fragment of power to build so if you do unlock it make sure you grab another one before you go home uh, otherwise you're not going to be able to craft it even something stupid like these petrified eggs that are just for decoration again need a fragment of power the only thing you don't need a fragment of power for is the taxidermies funnily enough but the yogurt chosen mask is again another sandstorm mask it works exactly the same way as the set mask it works exactly the same way as the uh, sandstorm mask you get but it just looks different so if you want to walk around in a level 60 special you know um, mask that very few people will probably have then yeah use the yogurt mask it is a sandstorm gas breathing mask so you can use that to go into the um, brimstone farm and get yourself some brimstone quite easily always a good show always a good show because you go there without a breathing mask you ain't gonna be farming much I mean we're wearing gear for vitality so we can take a fair few hits um, we've got double vitality perk on just for the temperature purposes and I'm currently running down to the next skull down here because from that first dragon there is another dragon down here and usually if nobody's farmed it that is there is another free fragment of power in the unnamed city to grab there should be a three skull chest there for a skeleton key but it looks like it's not there is the dragon there? the dragon is there right so is the fragment there? no the fragment would be somewhere there if it's free and it hasn't been taken by anybody. Yeah, it would. It would be... Oh, shite. Whoa. Alright, he's a three skull. Uh, oh, shit, we've got another one there as well. Right, see now, this guy, he doesn't really fare very well against the Krom guy, the bandit leader, unless... Unless he gets underneath him. 
see the health damage he's already taken off him. It's not really wise. Um, unless you can try and stack the bleed with the whirlwind blades, maybe. Get some sundering on the go. Put your torch back on. I mean, he's underneath the floor. Look, he's already pushed him under the floor. So if I can, if I can bring him back slightly, get him to aggro him, dodge out the way, and hopefully, Chrome guy can't take damage, but he can deal damage. So, oh, he's knocked him out the floor. Right, fair enough. Yeah, so now he's breathing fire. We can attack him till we're blue in the face, but he does deal quite a tasty bit of damage to us. And now there's two of them on us. Yeah, we need to go. Right, that, that's not worth it for a skeleton key in my opinion. I don't like that boss. That boss is really hard to kind of glitch out. You need to cheese it to try and get the bandit leader to go underneath it. And if the bandit leader's about to die, just run away. Because he will teleport the bandit leader right to you, look. Bop. His health is currently... Yeah, he's lost quite a fair whack. So we don't want to be dealing with that just yet. We're going to put the lifeblood spear back on. We're going to have that. We're going to eat something. We're going to take some ambrosia. We're going to get a triple heal on the go. Get our health all back up. And then I'll also show you how to get rid of your corruption while you're in the unnamed city farming as well. Um, we'll deal with that dragon so I can actually have a little chit chat. Hang on. That's only a baby. They're all one schools, the baby dragons. So feel free to just... Yeah, kill them. They're quite simple to deal with. As long as you know how to dodge. They're quite slow. Stack a lot of bleed. I don't know where Krom guy's gone. There he is, right. Hello. See the difference when I'm doing it on my own to when he's helping? Look at that damage. Absolutely ridiculous. Ridiculous, rather. Ridiculous? That's not even a word. Right, so he's knocked him on his arse again. Keep up with the bleed. And there we go. Right, so, star metal pickaxe, smack away, brimstone, dragon horn, dragon bone, exotic flesh. So now, we've got a decent supply of dragon bone and dragon horn. Never throw the dragon horn, because I did when I initially started trying to farm for dragon bone weapons, which are pretty cool actually, they're really quite cool. Um, they do a lot of damage as well, so they're good for thralls, and quite cheap. But you always need a dragon horn with dragon bone to craft one. So don't throw that one dragon bone thinking that, you know, you're, uh, you're okay to make it just because you got the dragon bone. It doesn't work like that for some reason. I don't know why. Um, just to piss people off more than likely, because I know it did to me. Right, we're going to go and have a look at the giant white rot, whatever you call it. I will learn how to pronounce that eventually, I'm sure. Uh, forgive me for now, people. But... Sorry, excuse me there, I was just having a drink. But, um, the thing to remember is the loot drop rate on the unnamed city bosses is absolutely terrible. It is really, really bad. So, just bear that in mind when you're farming. Um, and bear in mind as well that any weaponry caused by these will always give you corruption damage. See, gaining corruption from being hit. So ideally, you don't want to get smacked by it. Bandit leader guy just makes short work of the little ones, but we're over here looking for the big boss, and I think that's him there. Yeah, so again, he shares the same loot pool as all the others. So we're going to try and aggro him before he pulls that little one. Get out of it, mate. No, too late, he's already pulled the other one. Alright, dodge back. Get Bandit Leader to take the aggro because he can't get corrupted. And just stand back and watch the fireworks. Help him in the spine. Poke, 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 poke. That's not us causing that bleed. That's the uh, axe that the boss is using. So, again with the sandwich technique, just make sure that you do this, otherwise you'll be damaging your own thrall. And if you're using Telith, or you're using uh, a decent two-handed weapon, um, dragon bone or otherwise, and you keep sundering your bandit leader, you're going to end up doing more damage than the boss is doing. So just bear that in mind, people. Always kite around, let him pull the aggro, go behind him and hit him at the same time from the exact opposite angle to prevent damage to your own throw. 
You probably already know that. I'm just telling people for people who don't know. Luckily, he can't hurt or sunder us, though, because we'd probably get one shot. Especially with that Sword of Crom. That Sword of Crom is a beast. I really hope we get a drop. I mean, we'll probably rely on the Alboy now back for the drop, to be honest, which is going to be our last one we show. And then once we've done that, we'll move on to the... Oh, shit, I looked at the time. That that was us. So that did that did a fair whack. Bandit leader's aggression level seems to be toned down a bit just lately. But this guy is pretty damn quick. So I'm trying to pull the aggro so he can get a couple of hits on his arse. When he turns around, I'll go back in. And just keep this up pretty much. Just try not to get hit yourself by the corruption until you've got a heart to clear it. Right. So, what did we get there? Again, no legendary weapon. It's absolutely ridiculous. It would be, wouldn't it? I was farming this the other day, and um, I ended up with three legendary weapons from killing three bosses. Whereas I farmed it today, I think I've killed three or four so far, and I haven't got a single drop. That just goes to show you the RNG of it, it really does. Um, we'll go to the bat, actually, and we'll go and uh, deal with that, because that is a different loot pool. And uh, that one will drop the Riptide, which is a spear that we will need for the um, Sunken Temple Dungeon. If you farm the Albino Bat, it drops the Riptide every now and again. The Riptide gives you unlimited unwater breathing, so just like the Life Blood Spear, you'll pop it on like that, and then you go swimming, and it'll say water breathing instead of regeneration. So then you've got unlimited O2 to do the new dungeon with. It's a really, really, really big help, I must admit. And then once we've done the albino bat, and people have been farming here for a long time, you'll notice your corruption starts getting a bit high. Um, there is a way to clear it, and it's quite simple. Um, the bat's probably not even going to be here, is it? Because that guy's still here farming it. Right, okay. Um, we'll check, we'll check, it doesn't matter. We can always come back at a later date. But yeah, there's a, the Heart of the Hero, it's called, for uh, cleansing corruption. And there's a few places that you can find the Heart of the Hero. Um, any treasure hunters, any named fighters in or around the unnamed city will drop um, a Heart of the Hero. Once you've got the Heart of the Hero, you can retain it until your corruption is very bad. And then as soon as your corruption is causing you problems, you can eat it and it will completely cleanse all your corruption so you don't need a dancer with you. You can take a bandit leader and just farm on the fly because the bandit leader pretty much one shots the tier four fighters anyway. So we're gonna come down here. If you look um, where I just ran from, sorry. Um, straight down there, past the big guy with the torches. Up here, do a left. And you will see, hopefully, if he hasn't been killed. Oh, has he been killed? It looks like he's been killed. Right, as soon as you enter the corrupted area, you know that it's it's going to be a boss farm. So we'll come up here. No, he hasn't been killed. Brilliant, brilliant. All right, there he is. So that's the aviary. Just there. Again, the bat. The albino bat. He causes sunder. He's a bit of a bitch, actually, if you haven't got a, um, a decent strength build or at least uh, an armor, armor build. And he's pretty bloody quick as well. If you can get Cromdoy to land a hit before the aggro, we should be sound. There we go, there we go, there we go. He's sundered in, pull the aggro a bit, take a little smack, let him pull it back. Continue the bleed. And continue the bleed. Right, don't forget, this is no strength build on my part. There's no strength on me at all, really. Right, we need to spin around the other side. Do a bit of sunder. Keep that bleed up with the lifeblood spear. Keep your health up by keep turning it on and off. If you get hit, the regen stops. So always remember, on, off, on, off. If you're getting hit. So we're going to continue the bleed. Help the bandit leader out because we want him to kill the name thralls as well. For the heart of the hero. But every time he does that sort of roar, that's going to put a sunder on you. Sunder is the little broken shield and sunder um, makes you lose armor. It, it, it hits through your armor, that's why it hurts you more. So if you get like a stack of 
two or three Sunder and then he swings at you, you're going to take like a shit ton of damage. So he's nearly gone. Finish him. Thank you very much. Right, what we get? Do we get anything? Still no legendary. My god, this video is useless. Right, anyway, um, we'll probably carry on and just keep killing shit until we actually get a legendary drop. Just to show you all that they do actually drop. You would be surprised they do actually drop. What the hell are you fighting, boy? Okay, Cromboy's glitched out. <laughs> Come on, dude. Alright, let's get out of this corruption. Um, it's causing a bit of... Uh, a bit of damage now, we don't like that. So we're gonna try and find um, a place where the named thralls spawn that will drop the heart of the hero for us so we can cleanse. There's a few bats here as well um, that you can get. I think there may be some named fighters up here. I'm not entirely sure, but we can have a look. I swear there was a little area down by uh, the albino bat that did it as well. It may have been over there actually. Should we have a look? Let's have a look. Right, this is the top of the aviary. Let's have a look. Hmm. Hmm. Was it there? Or was it there? I forget. Let's have a quick gander. We'll have a gander. I know there's one down by, um, what's it called? Uh, the one-handed skeleton they're literally right above him uh, which is handy because you can fight him and then go down there and then fight them and then clear all your corruption but I just want to show you before the video time runs out um, how to cleanse corruption while you're in here so you can continue to farm but um, yeah as I was saying the uh, the albino bat drops riptide it drops the quivering arrows which are legendary arrows um, and they're really quite powerful. They're a real beast of an arrow. Uh, you put that in a, in a legendary bow, you're laughing. You're laughing for days. They really hurt. Whoa! I'm speaking, you bastard. Thank you. Right, see how we stopped healing? Now we've got to turn it back on. Right, we're just looking for a bridge. I believe it was a bridge by the one-handed skeleton guy which is the polar bloody opposite end typical right I'll have a look for a different one or if we get there before we find one then you know but yeah there is uh, there is just named uh, thralls running around they do hit pretty hard so just bear that in mind always bring a thrall with you it's always pays to bring a thrall um, I don't think there's any down there We've killed one of every boss and there's no there's no legendaries. I cannot believe there hasn't been a single legendary drop. I am so surprised. Not. <laughs> but yeah, that's the thing that happens with this. I mean, you could be here for days. Um, and that's why I don't mind the drop rates because of the fragments of power. Because if you get the fragments of power, I mean, we got five fragments of power. We got no legendary weapons. Fine. But if you go and turn all those into the esoterics, the archives... Um, you could end up with like a venom infused weapon and then you could go back and craft yourself some venom infused as well I think it's this bridge actually is it this bridge? right we've got a skeleton on us again I think it was this bridge but again it's really difficult to show oh there he is right okay right, let's, let's, uh, let's kill this guy real quick From. thank you very much right that guy there he is a named so if you look right where we are there's this little bridge platform here it's opposite the red dragon so it's, a, it's the bridge that the red dragon is underneath so just over there and underneath is the big red dragon boss so we're going to go and kill him well Cromboy's going to kill him because yeah I don't want to piss about with it he's usually got a few cronies to the right and left of him that'll probably pull but if you smack him or her in the spine you can throw all these as well um, but if you pull them away get away from the archers dealing your damage um, pull them all away cause a bit of bleed let Cromboy do the rest look at that, look at the damage on that cause a stagger 
cause another stagger, let it turn around, and then let him do the rest. Yeah, feel free, dude. Or not. His aggression level does seem to have gone down a lot in the last couple of updates. Right, there we go. There we go. Right, so now we've got the heart of the hero. This. So you'll take that, you'll take the legendary weapon repair kit, and we will eat the heart of the hero. If you notice our corruption top left, that purple bar, watch this. Bop. Eat that, it's gone. Lost all the corruption. Put the lifeblood spear on, have a bit to eat. Get a double heal on the go. Wait a sec, and you got full health, you got full stamina, you got no corruption, and you can continue your farm. As long as your durability is okay. So, currently we have 428.5 on our whirlwind blades. We've got six legendary weapon repair kits. It's a quarter off, so we'll click X, we'll click X again, and we should have full durability, so we're five up. That's going to allow us to farm another five, so then technically you're only using one legendary weapon repair kit for every six um, bosses you kill, so you're still yielding five legendary weapon repair kits in profit, and he doesn't use durability because he's a thrall, so the Sword of Chrome will never die. You can't use it yourself anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But yeah, um, that's pretty much the unnamed city. Uh, there isn't really much to say. I mean, I don't, I don't understand why people are so confused about it, but it's pretty simple. I mean, the loot drops, yeah, I can understand, but there's loads of different things you can do. I mean, the Red Dragon's back, look. I mean, maybe... Maybe we've got enough time to do the Red Dragon. He's a skeleton key, though, so I really don't see the point. Hmm, I really don't see the point. I wanted to show you that he's, uh his fragment of power was um, behind him, just freely open. It's in a little tiny box. It's like a little a little variant of the uh, iron box um, that you can craft, but you can just freely pick it up and it just gives you a free fragment of power, and there's two that I know too. And it's literally that dragon and then straight down to the other dragon. Um, have we got another boss we could fight? Maybe that serpent man spawned back. I just want to kill one more um, and then we'll call the video there because there's really nothing else to say if they're not dropping the legendaries. I guarantee you they do. I can guarantee you they do. Um, is he back? Is this him? Yeah, this is him. Right, so he's back. Right, so you start with the serpent man, you go all the way around, kill each and every one of them at least once, get a heart of the hero, clear all your corruption by which point you can go back to the serpent man and he will have respawned. As long as nobody else is farming it, as long as nobody else is killing it, then you should be good. You should be really good. And this is the farm. This is all you do. This is end game, uh, level 60 content. Um, you can do this till you're blue in the face. There's plenty of legendaries to get. You can kit your uh, thralls out with some legendary armors if you don't want them. Um, a lot of the weapons have brilliant buffs that people don't know about as well. Ideally, this lifeblood spear is one of the best weapons in the game, in my opinion, because you haven't got to worry about heals. If you ain't in a rush to heal, you can just literally put that on, and you're good. Bandit leader boy doesn't need to worry about health reduction as long as he's in Silent Legion, because of the damage reduction that Silent Legion has. Uh, Sword of Crom, you can't use yourself because on one swing it drains all of your stamina. Thralls don't use stamina, ergo give it a thrall. And there we go, right, perfect. What a way to end the video. Predatory Blade. There we go, people. And that was what I was trying to show you. Very little chance, but it can happen. So now, the Predatory Blade is ours, along with six legendary weapon repair kits and six fragments of power. So now, if we put the predatory blade on, that's what it looks like. It looks really, really cool. If we could actually see it from a decent angle. Right, there we go. But this weapon, believe it or not, is very strange because you can use it as a truncheon. Yeah, I know. You can use it as a truncheon. It's R1 attack, it's light attack, this one. That hits like an absolute tank. It really does. It absolutely rips through everything. It's like, what, what was the damage on it? I forget. Uh, 
97 damage with 9 armor pen, but only for the light. Watch this. Right, we'll kill the one on the right with just the light. This is without a strength build, bear in mind. Right, there we go. So he's dead. Oh, you absolute bellend. Yeah, I was trying to show you something there. But anyway, the um, predatory blade's got a, a weird feature, whereas if you use the light attack, it does 91 damage per hit. But if you do the heavy, it does zero damage per hit. So if you put a blunted weapon fitting on it, oh, that looks pretty cool, doesn't it? Nice, nice T pose, dude. Nice T pose. I think we'll end the video with that screenshot. Um, that weapon, if you use the heavy attack on it with a blunted weapon fitting, it does no damage at all. No damage at all. So you can use it to knock things out, and then you get to be able to use this heavy combo. Which, if you use that on a bandit leader, it will knock him flat on the floor. You wait like one or two seconds and you do it again. That's uninterruptible. That starts the combo for stunning and that knocks him on the floor again. So literally, you can just do that three times, four times till your stamina's out and half of his knockout bar's gone. That's how I got this guy. I've got another bandit leader doing in the Wheel of Pain as well. So currently, yeah, predatory blade with a blunted weapon fitting and a shield. I wouldn't personally use the shield though, because the shield interrupts the combo for the predatory blade, you end up punching him with the shield, it messes all the stun block up. So just use the predatory blade and dodge. That's all I can tell you. Use some medium gear, make sure you're able to, you know, roll and stuff. Anyway, I am out of time, I'm afraid, and I'm sorry that this has taken so very long to get another video out, but I did want to do another PvP video. <clears throat> um, raid wise uh, I thank you all again for the amount of views that you've given me on that um, the first video on the channel to top a K in views and it's at 1300 now nearly um, I've got a lot more subs as well so I'm really grateful for that thank you all um, I really hope you're enjoying the content still people and I will try and keep it coming as much as I can <clears throat> but there's nobody to raid there is literally nobody to raid there's nobody on the server <laughs> And I really don't want to quit and change server for the fourth or fifth time to get it DDoSed again. So I'm just trying to wait for people to build up, let everybody get to be 60, and then maybe the raid videos will continue. Until that time, I can't really do anything but guides. So I'm going to try and think of some guides, and I'll give you all a bit of a bow. It's goodbye from me for now. Goodbye from Mr. Bandit Leader. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video, found it informative. If there's any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll probably update the description with uh, the loot pools from each creature as well. Just to make it that much easier for you to, at a glance, have a look. Right, I hope that's helped you out, peeps. Um, and yeah, I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers, peeps. Ta-da.